Hello, it's me, and welcome to Vlogmas Day 6. Today I am going to do a sit down vlog about my chronic illness journey. I wanted to do my chronic illness journey video for a long time now, but the journey is kind of long and complicated and I want to give as much information as possible. It's taken me a few weeks to put together, but if I lean in here, I'm just looking at my little list that I have made of all the events. I will just be looking at that randomly. Let's talk about what a chronic condition or illness is. A chronic health condition persists over a long period of time. I think it just has to do with it has long lasting effects and it's over a long stretch of time. And there is a gray area between what is and what isn't a chronic illness. Like, I have been diagnosed with a condition called PMDD. And so that could be solved over time, that could be cured. But also some people are never cured from PMDD. So it's just like, it's hard. I think it depends on every single person. It's a little bit different. Is it PMDD or is it just a hormone imbalance? Like PMDD is not curable, but the symptoms of it could be. When I was between the ages of zero and 10 years old, I started to display early signs of depression and anxiety and separation anxiety. So for example, um, my mom would find me sitting in the timeout corner or in the timeout chair and I would be putting myself in timeout. And she would ask me, why are you putting, us why are you putting yourself in timeout? And I would say, well, I did something bad and she would ask me the bad thing that I did and she would say that it wasn't something bad at all and so it was obvious that even as a toddler I was beating myself up about things that I shouldn't have been and I don't remember this but she vividly does and just they made up all these solutions to like if, I, if, we, if they were going somewhere if, if our family was going somewhere and we got there and it was closed, I would flip out because I could not deal with change rapidly. Also, when I was a toddler, I was diagnosed with an overactive gag reflex because I was vomiting all the time. Um, I just like randomly, I would just like vomit like two, four, seven, no matter what I ate, whatever. So the doctors just diagnosed me with an overactive gag reflex instead of trying to figure out why the heck this little girl is throwing up every two minutes. Physically, I was having early signs of fatigue. I would get called lazy at school because I didn't want to get up. I would dread PE because I always felt so sick afterward. I was also diagnosed with hypoglycemia, but not like officially diagnosed. It was just like, Oh yeah, her blood sugar's low. Just give her a piece of candy or give her juice when her, when she's acting like that. Instead of being like, why is this little girl having hypoglycemia at, at four? In elementary school, my mom would meet me at the gate of the school with a juice box and I was not allowed to do anything or talk to anyone until I had the juice box because my blood sugar will have dropped so dramatically between lunchtime and the time I went home from school. That's also around the time I started really dreading school and hating going to school because I would get overstimulated and I would start to feel sick. <laughs> I think it was hard for teachers to understand me when I'm saying that my stomach hurts all the time because they just think that kids want to get out of anything and they'll just say anything so they don't have to do something. And that's not true. I was asking for help, but no one believed me and that's a theme that you're gonna see throughout this. I was also diagnosed with heart palpitations uh, under the age of 10. I don't remember when exactly that was but that's a sign of adrenal fatigue. Um, they took EKGs and they came out normal otherwise just this like heart palpitation um, randomly which wasn't dangerous and it's like a thing. Um, but again no one was like why is this little kid having heart palpitations? Like, I just don't understand where that thought process is. Okay, moving on. From ages 11 to 15 now. So at age 11, I went to Girl Scout camp and there were 
tick checks, there were ants, there were bed nets, platform tents. I suspect that this is where I caught Lyme and Babesia. Um, like I said, every night we had tick checks and I got sick and I had to come home early um, and no one believed me that I was sick. Surprise! And they just thought I was homesick when really I wasn't. I just wasn't feeling well and overstimulated and they were going from sun up to sundown and past 10 o'clock at night every night and I just was really fatigued and I could not keep up. Now I didn't have Lyme before I went there but right when I got it, these symptoms got worse. Also at this time, the depression and anxiety really reared their heads, like causing me a lot of discomfort, causing me to make decisions because my depression and anxiety were in charge. I also had an acceleration of physical symptoms around this age. I had a lot of inflammation. I would have my mom take me to the GP and ask her why I was fat because I was a competitive athlete, a competitive dancer, and I was a pretty active person, even as fatigued as I was feeling, even as lazy as I was. Our GP told my mom that I was just secretly eating and not telling her. This is also when my self-esteem started to really plummet because I felt like I was asking for help and it wasn't being given to me so I was gaslighting myself really if you think about it and I was being gaslighted and I don't think it was anyone's any one specific person's fault but I think that there were many adults at this time who failed me. I was also showing early signs of food sensitivities and allergies. I would eat something and then vomit. I would eat something and have diarrhea. It got to the point where I just was used to having diarrhea all the time and I thought that that was like okay. It's not. My asthma started getting much worse. That was combated with an inhaler and um, the nebulizer. At this point, I started to also get sick once a month. Um, I would always have a cold. I started to develop a chronic cough. Um, also, at this time, the early signs of PMDD and hormone imbalances started to show. I also had frequent athletic injuries, and I was on crutches every six months with an ankle problem or a knee problem. And yeah, you expect athletes to get hurt, but it, for me, it was all the time. And instead of someone going, why is this girl getting injured so often? It turned into, I'm a baby and I am faking it and it's not really that bad. I figured out later that I'm malnourished because of another condition, which I hadn't been diagnosed with until this year. My body was just not processing B vitamins. So let's move on to ages 16 to 18. At 16, I had a traumatic experience. My mom cut off her fingers with a table saw and I had to handle it. And then she was in the hospital for a few weeks after that. And then after that, it just like her mobility wasn't exactly the same. And I know it seems like it's only two fingers and they sewed them back on, but I think that just like was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. As far as mental health issues, they just extremely heightened. Like if, if it was a graph, it would have been like a slow upturn and then when I turned 16 and this happened, it just would have been like, woo, <laughs> like really fast in a short amount, or like this, I guess, really fast in a short amount of time. I went to a psychiatrist at that time. That, and this was my first experience with any kind of mental health doctor and she was awful. She gave me some Xanax and she had me on Xanax three times a day or 0 0.025 milligrams three times a day and also Ambien CR every single night with an, a double dose of the Xanax um, and then the extra Xanax as needed. My anxiety didn't get any better. It just continued to worsen. So I just kept taking more of the Xanax. I don't remember junior year of high school. I do not remember it. I couldn't tell you my teachers. I couldn't tell you what I did. I couldn't tell you like, I look at photos, like we went on field trips to 
like sea world and stuff do not remember this those seeing those photos are the first time i have seen them like it seems like that why that doctor thought it was thought it was okay to just drug me instead of trying to figure out what was wrong is like another thing and this is like i said it's going to be a theme it's like pass the buck on this girl you know um so physically my fatigue began to worsen a lot i couldn't get out of bed to do anything and we all thought it was mental health issues so i hated school and my mom helped me enroll in dual enrollment so i was going half part-time to school part-time high school and then part-time to college and i'm really glad i got to do that because otherwise i don't think i would have i would have just dropped out and done at home school so i would go to, and that, at this point also i had quit choir because my voice wasn't reliable i kept losing my voice all the time now i realize that that's inflammation i mean after i quit singing so much i went to dance full time and i was dancing for three or four hours a night and I would wake up in the morning and then not be able to wake up and just be like completely miserable. I feel like I've been hit by a truck. Um, and like, yeah, there's some soreness that you would expect, but it was just like to the point where my limbs felt so heavy. And like back then I'm, I beat myself up and I'm think, I think to myself, you're being a baby, suck it up. You can do this. Don't be such a weakling. Because for my whole life, any kind of physical activity, I was called weak. I was always last. I would get so ill during exercise at school that I would have to sit down and then of course people thought I was lying because classic me, right? I'm just a liar about all my medical conditions. Um, please hold, Levi's knocking on the door. Okay, buddy. Hi, okay, why don't you lay down? Come here, come here, lay down right here. There you go. Good boy. Okay, back to the video. My chronic cough got to the point where I had to bring my nebulizer everywhere I went, and it was really annoying. <laughs> um, and then when I turned 18, I was hospitalized for mono, and I was hospitalized for, I think, like four or five days. I honestly don't even remember because I was still on a bunch of um xanax <laughs> my mom brought me into the er because my blood pressure was extremely low this is of course an indication of liver failure and adrenal fatigue or liver stress and adrenal fatigue at this point is when i really think the me started to creep in because i was now I didn't know it at the time, but at this point, around the age of 18, I was now dealing with three co-infections, Babesia, Lyme disease, and Epstein-Barr virus. I got more ill at the hospital, and they, but they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. But And I was going into psychosis at the hospital, um, and I had a IV in my arm that had saline in it with a dextrose lactated ringer. Those of you who don't know what dextrose is, it's corn. I now know I am violently allergic to corn. Like, it's one of my biggest mental health triggers. I do remember being in the hospital room in the bed and thrashing and screaming and just having like the worst anxiety. It was like legitimate hysteria, psychosis. I was out of control. They thought I was being dramatic because I was a teenager and then I was sent home with inconclusive results. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and I was seemed to be stable with that extremely low blood pressure so they were like bye. I had extreme post hospitalization fatigue and the excuse is just like teens sleep a lot like she just had mono you know everything kind of made sense as far as how i was feeling because it was such a bad time but i just did not recover past that this is when the chronic pain really began this is also when i had an initial drop in weight because i could not eat as much as i used to for all intents and purposes as far as like looks wise hi baby mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I lost some weight and I, w which everyone was like, like I was sick and that's why I lost weight. Yet I got celebrated at my dance studio and by my friends for losing weight. 
and so I was like, yay, I'm glad I got sick, because then I got to be skinny, because my BDD was so bad already, I was just like, I didn't care if I was ill, I didn't care what it took, as long as I was thin, and this is a theme that will develop over time as well. I was cleared three weeks before I went to college in fall of 2010 by my doctor, and this time it was just my GP, the same one that told my mom I was secret eating. Yeah, I still went to her because I didn't like her, but what choice do you have when that's the doctor that your family chose to go to? Like, I just am not an assertive person. You're so cute. I went to college in fall of 2010. And... Hey, thanks for watching. Click the link below to watch part two.